So you want to introduce yourself to the people? Yes. My name is Gio, aka Prometheus Brown. I am one half of the group of scholars from out of Seattle, Washington. Yes, indeedy. So how I found you and the Blue Scholars was through Sacramento's DeLorean. And last time you guys were out here, you were with them, so I caught that show. Super dope. What was it like working with DeLorean? It was great. I mean, they've held us down in many ways. You know, they came up to Seattle. We did that track together. Yep. A reset. They're gracious enough to actually, instead of me having to fly down to the desert where they was at, yeah. they actually came up to Seattle. They, they had a show out there, but then they also fit in time to do the green screen yep. video shoot with me. And I'm looking forward to hearing more from them, so I'm glad to see that the, the video's out and that mm -hmm. more music is on its way. Yes. And I've, again, we're back at Slim's. Last time we was here was when we did a show with them. Yep. And that video is so dope. Like, you don't see that concept all the time, so it's a super dope concept. I'm glad that they actually got to shoot you in it because, you know, sometimes they'll just skip the verse yeah. or crazy stuff like that. Yeah. So it's good that it actually worked out. Mm -hmm. And then, so you did the project of Bamboo, Walk Into a Bar. Yes. We talked about it a little bit. What was that process like for you? You guys were in Hawaii. A lot of the fans really have wanted a project from you guys together because you've done tracks together so often. So actually in Hawaii, actually able to do it, what was that process like for you? It was almost the way it needed to happen mm -hmm. in order for this project to get done because it's something we've talked about for so long now. Mm -hmm. Even just doing like one or two songs yeah. we talked about doing. But in the meantime, of course, there's been tracks that you know I've been featured on on his there's a track we've done together we've been on other people's project we're both on a track and so for you know years has passed by we keep doing our thing yeah he does his thing we cross paths every once in a while and pass cross once again in Hawaii we had already blue scholars and bamboo had already done a couple shows out there mm -hmm. he's been out there himself we've been out there ourselves there was a network of people that were all intertwined. You know, that's where information came in. Yeah. Uh, they looked out for us and Bamboo whenever uh, either of us or both of us are in Hawaii. And so when we were both there back last November, mm -hmm. the initial plan was just to do like maybe two or three songs. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them with Osna, who's a producer in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He yep. opened up his studio. We got in there, knocked out three and sat on it went back home and decided, you know what? We're like a third of the way. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're halfway through an EP or a third of the way through for an album. Exactly. And we already knew we were going to be seeing each other a lot. Mm -hmm. I was going to go down to LA. He had, he was doing a smuggler's tour. He was going to be back in Seattle. So over the next few months after, after that trip to Hawaii, we had a few more producers, did the rest of it uh, over the internet. Mm -hmm. um, and next thing you know, we had an album that was ready to go, but even with Exact Change re-release, mm -hmm. and we had Blue Scholars had Cinema Metropolis, yep. and initially we we're like, you know what, let's sit on this mm -hmm. and, and give it a its own release. But that's where Beat Rock came into the equation. Beat Rock already does yep. uh, bamboo stuff, and they gave us a home for the album. So we're like, you know what, let's let's put it out <laughs> and give it a life of its own, mm -hmm. knowing that we're going to be going on tour together. So right now, you know, for the purpose of giving the project a name beyond just the album, mm -hmm. uh, we're the bar now. Prometheus Brown and Bamboo are the bar. Oh, okay, dope. Yeah. Planning to do is do a bunch of smaller shows, either on off days or even mm -hmm. after hours after nice. the show on the tour as we go. We've already did, we've already done two, one in LA and one in Bremerton on our off day okay. um, in the Northwest. And who knows, we might pop up, pop back up in the Bay, maybe down nice. in LA. that would be dope. Uh, you know, they love the you guys out here, yeah. so. Good stuff. He talked about the significance of the title, Walk Into a Bar, how you guys were going to bars every night, <laughs> not doing super crazy drunken things, but that's just where you guys would end up. So yeah. did you guys find a deeper significance in calling your, yourselves the bar, or it's just straight from the title? It's, you know, Kind of like with Blue Scholars, there's always multiple meanings mm -hmm. that come after the. Yeah, you think the, about after it. After we think about it, it just mm -hmm. sounds cool at first. So it was very literal. The bar, meaning this project was birthed when we were both sitting at a bar yep. in Hawaii talking about the studio time that we're going to be doing the next day. Mm -hmm. But then now, you know, obviously the bar 
bar measurement when you're writing lyrics. Yeah. Uh, Trying to raise the bar. Yeah, raising the bar. Yeah. One of us or both of us might end up going to law school at some point in our lives. Right. So there's the bar too. Like Hopi. <laughs> yeah, like Hopi. Exactly. But it all stems from the very literal, simple thing. Yeah. That's, and that's what we want the project to be. It's, it's kind of like our heads are in other places musically, mm -hmm. but there's an intersection because of where we've already been and mm -hmm. where we're at now. And we're just gonna let this be that intersection. Nice. And it just so happens that it's not just us, but as we get older, mm -hmm. as we're not out there wilding out as much as we used to, the chances that we do get to interact with certain people is let's go out to the bar. And yeah. catch up. <laughs> that makes sense. And then did you have a favorite track off of the actual project? It changes. I say mm -hmm. right now I like the bar. Oh. One, one of the two tracks produced by Vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Do you want to introduce yourself to the people? Hi, Saba. <laughs> Sabzi. Welcome. So, I read that you guys, when you were going through names for yourselves, you went through like 50 names in the Blue Scars in their summer. Do you remember any of the other names? I know this was years and years ago. Oh, dang. It's been so long. <laughs> it's like a painful memory, I think. Aww. Good old fashioned B Boys. Nice. Very hip hop. Um, <laughs> there was a few that were like the blank, the mm -hmm. something. Presco? Yeah, that was more. Presco. We were, we were using words from other languages. Oh, okay. Like, oh. From Tagalog, from Farsi. Nice. And then we were like, that's not gonna work. Nice. So you guys really have your own lanes as far as Blue Scar goes. Do you ever want to make beats or do you ever want to rap or do you just really stay in your lane? He does make beats and oh, I do rap. Really? Yeah, but I don't know if they're ever going to come out. It's just free time type stuff? Yeah, I mean like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come out for the right reason mm -hmm. and we, I just haven't found the right reason to put out vocals yet. Oh, wow. And then, did I, are I'll the, put out are the beats thing. like above my head? Or no, or I'm, this? I, I can't, my keyboard skills aren't up there. I mm -hmm. have a very basic understanding of music theory. Mm -hmm. So if I do make beats, basically you're good old looping a sample nice. and putting your own drums on it. Hey, which it I do for myself just for fun. And I'd love to continue doing it, but I don't really have like an itch to be like, I wanna mm -hmm. put this out. So it, might, it may or may not come Makes out. Sense. I mean, I'm, I just made a beat on the drive down here. Nice. On the iPad. There you go. For no particular beats. reason. <laughs> so then I was reading that I think it was not on Cinematropolis, but the project before that. That you did one of the tracks where you just had him rap a cappella and then you made the beat around him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were talking about how you want to do that more. Did you end up doing that more on Cinematropolis? Or? Actually, no. Oh. The way no, we didn't, not, not with this one. Have you done that anymore with like other people, like with Bamboo or anything like that? Yeah, I, with Bam, I've done remixes for other people. Oh, okay. And that, you know, that involves taking the acapella first mm -hmm. and building the beat around it. So I did okay. stuff for Bam, did stuff for Rodney Rivera, nice. did something for indie rock singer, a dude named Fences from Seattle. Oh, okay. Um, what else? Raphael Sadiq. Raphael Sadiq. Nice. Um, those came out. That was a while ago. I don't mm -hmm. know if you ever heard those. I did two remixes for Ruffy. I gotta find those. That's I, should, I should say that one more often. I oh, they're on SoundCloud. They're on SoundCloud. They came out on SoundCloud. You know. <laughs> Doing it big. Let's see what else. That's all I can think of right now. I just think that's a super cool process because I talk to producers a lot about like having visions and things like that and they just like, what they'll do is they start off with the vision and then they send it to the rapper and they're like, hey, this is what the beat sounds like. But to do the opposite was just super cool to me. It's like, oh, it's wow. A different, yeah, it's a different process and it allows you to tap into your creative mm -hmm. mind in another way. I think it can help, honestly. Yeah, yeah. A lot. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's like a weird training wheel. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of focuses more on the rapper's vision, which is also important that we don't get that all the time. So I was talking to Bamboo about Inglewood Humperdinck. Yeah. So what has that for Like, why did you guys choose to really come to, Like, why didn't all three of y'all just do a project yet? And why are you separately working with Bamboo? That's the case first. <laughs> oh, okay. Inglewood Humperdinck has been on the back burner for like three years. Oh, wow. Yeah, like that song is over like almost three years old. Oh, wow. And we just never put it out. Because mm -hmm. it was like, yo, we should finish like ten cuts and then mm -hmm. put them all out at once. And then we realized that... Of work. We shouldn't act like we're 40 years old. <laughs> that's not how it works anymore. Um, 
I still think it's dope to do an album, mm -hmm. but like since Bam's focus is his career and mm -hmm. my focus is, is mine, like everything we do is going to be where we happen to overlap. Mm -hmm. We decide, okay, let's just do like one track at a time. We have like a few other cuts. Nice. And as soon as like those happen to get mixed, they'll probably come out. Yeah, he was saying that like he doesn't want to say that it's gonna come out or when it's gonna come out, but the blogs are say saying spring 2012. Oh, they so did. I read yeah, that somewhere. Yeah, so did that come out? I don't know, but that's <laughs> the blog. Oh, oh yeah. no, blog. You can, basically, anything that Bam, anything that Bamboo and I do, mm -hmm. just the two of us, is called Inglewood Humper Day. Okay. So. <laughs> Inglewood Humperdinck now exists and will forever exist. I even have the domain. That's name. what he told me. Don't Surprise, try to buy it. Surprisingly, nobody it. else had bought it. You got yeah, it. I got Good it. job. Inglewood. <laughs> I love it. Are you guys going to come together for another project together? Or what's it looking like for the Blue Scholars themselves? Well, we're still in the middle of Like, Cinotropolis kind of just came out. Mm hmm. So what's next for us is to continue with the Cinotropolis yeah. campaign. Push that to the movies. Point. Make some videos, make yeah. some cool movie posters. They put a heart and soul into making music. Yeah. And so we're going to squeeze every bit of life out of that. Definitely. Um, <laughs> we have a bunch of unreleased material too. Oh, wow. That um, now that the proper album is out, I went back and revisited. Mm -hmm. And I was convinced for like a good one or two years that these songs suck <laughs> and they oh. don't belong on this album, which is natural. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, hey. We should put these out. Nice. So who knows? We might be real dicks about it and put it on cassette. Oh wow, yeah. that would. I, oh, so you think that's a good idea? I think that's okay, a super great. dope. Cause um, like you know, people do like weird things where they'll only release it on CD, but cassette. That shit yeah, would be crazy. Yeah. We have a bunch of unreleased like our lost tapes. And but, they would be actual tapes. I love that so much. Yeah. Like that's hella cool. Special Sunday's radio show is live every Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. on ksfs.sfsu.edu. And for everything special, check out specialsundays.com.